Uh, for example, when Granny Smith gave her uh, speech on, you know, the founding of uh, Ponyville and all that, w w um, you know, w when she was done, there was a quite sincere and heartfelt round of applause. That probably sounds really stupid, but at the moment I was like, yes, you guys are correct on this one. Go Granny Smith. Um, and that, and that, I suppose that brings me to the episode in general, um, which I should probably rewatch it just to, um, you know, <laughs> to, to make sure that it's actually good outside of a context like that. But my instinct was, you know, I was worried when I read it was a Cutie Mark Crusader episode. I thought it was really good. I, I think this was the strongest Cutie Mark Crusader episode that they've done yet. Uh, s some of the slapstick stuff with like the, uh, the, uh, zombie well not zombie the the, the puppet uh granny smith that they were controlling that, that that was hilarious granny smith herself is great um the storyline was well done I, I i mean one of the things that i've always enjoyed about the show in general is that you know they they do usually have a starting point of a basic um you know children show storyline and you can kind of read those and it was like we've seen the storyline four billion times you know something like a younger child is potentially embarrassed, embarrassed of a older family member and is trying to avoid them, you know, something in that basic vein. But then they go, they take this concept and they play it out really, really well. And there's a certain refreshing quality to that. Um, I, I thought this was right up there. Um, and one of, it, it's definitely in, I think, the top half of uh, season two episodes. So uh, I, I do want to rewatch it just to make sure you know, it wasn't just the atmosphere that was doing that, but my gut instinct is saying, no, this episode kind of kicked ass. I, I really enjoyed it. So, um, and the crowd certainly did as well. Um, I suppose, uh, okay, another quick sidebar here. Getting a bunch of bronies to break out into song is one of the easiest things to accomplish that I've ever seen. Um, the, the, the one moment that maybe I didn't enjoy was the entire crowd singing along in the My Little Pony theme. Um, th th there was a gentleman there who was, it was funny because when I first got there and I was, you know, maybe not in, in a bit of a sour mood because of the weight and all that, um, I saw a guy, it, th there was pony shirts everywhere, as I'm sure you can imagine, every single one that you can think of, someone was wearing somewhere. Um, and the one guy had a Ramon shirt. And, it, you know, I just sort of made a note, like, hmm, Ramones fan. You, you know, like, it didn't mean anything. I, I, I'm not even sure why it stuck with me. But, you know, it, it, it stuck with me that there was someone not wearing a pony shirt there. I don't know why. Um, this guy was more into the singing and the stuff that people make fun of pony fans for than possibly anyone else there. And when they started singing the theme song to the episode, he he kind of jumped up, I think potentially on his chair and was like borderline pretending to conduct everyone singing and dancing around. And like, I was like, all right. Uh, I, I would love to see that dude at a Ramones concert. But yeah, I, I, and I would say that breaking out into song uh, happened at more than a few points. Occasionally you would hear it happening in the lobby or something. But um so that was that. But, you know, overall, the experience of watching with a live crowd, I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, that brings to the voice, er, the, the actress panel. Um, hmm. You know, I, I actually want to rewatch this because, uh, again, I'm still in the back spot. I've been standing since, uh, you know, you know, 115 at this point. Um, so the acoustics in the room were such that... Um, the sound wasn't that good, especially at first, particularly the parts where they were discussing their earlier careers. This was compounded by the fact that some people just did not shut the fuck up in the lobby, in the back section that we were standing at, where there were obviously people. I mean, it, it was packed for this. Everyone was there. It was obviously packed with people trying to listen. And then there's people talking about pony shirts, you know, and um, the nerdy voice, I believe, has a certain extra tinge to it, which makes it a bit louder. Um, so, so it just made the situation worse. Um, I believe at one point, um, Mr. Horse got really pissed off at this and just told them, like, shut up. And I was like, oh, good on you. 
Um, and eventually someone uh, just closed the door to the back section after a while. Uh, this might qualify as a fire hazard, but I was in favor of it because it actually made the audio a bit better for the parts where they were actually discussing the show. As I understand it, there was a live stream of the whole thing, and they uh, have the um, entire panel available if you want to just pull it up and watch it. I'm probably going to end up doing that uh, probably on Monday or something. Uh, I mean, it sounded like it was interesting stuff that they were talking about. I just didn't catch all of it because of uh, you know mixture of the acoustics and the people never shutting up. Um, so... My read on it was uh, the voice actress for uh, Celestia and Shirley. They, they, they were all awesome, by the way. I'm, I mean, and I think that goes without saying. It, it struck me that um, she seemed more like, you know, an actress, actress, you know, like an artiste, if you will. I don't mean that in a bad way. Just like her personality type more than the other two. Uh, you know, she, she was talking about her time in the theater and certain, uh, you know, works that she had done and stuff like that. It, it, it was kind of interesting just to see that and then think about you know the characters that she plays and her speaking style which play into that I, I, i'm not quite sure what my point is there but it was an interesting um combo for me uh then ashley ball is really funny i i i, I you know um she, she had a quick read of response to just about anything and uh libman you know the, the read on her personality would be like um I can see why she plays Fluttershy, just the way that she, you know, she had a softer voice than the other two, and, um, you know, so I, I have to give her, and the way she was sitting was more like, you know, just that kind of personality type. Um, so I give her a lot of credit for, you know, how badass she is at Pinky. I, one of the best moments of the whole thing was somebody had asked, um, you know, a, a, she had gotten a reputation of being able to slip into the... Uh, slip it out of Fluttershine into Pinkie Pie and vice versa really easily with like no, um, you know, she can just do it in one thing. So of course, like the crowd's like, do it, do it. And, you know, which that must be a very intense situation to be in. Cause if you fuck up, then, you know, uh, but then she, I won't try to mimic it. You can look it up if you like her response to that. I thought was great. She, she did a fantastic job. Um, so the audio was a bit better when they started discussing it. When they brought in the people from the crowd, um, it actually was very good. I don't know if they turned it up or what, but I was able to catch just about everything from the crowd. Screening the questions, excellent idea. Kudos on them. Um, it, it was amusing when they said, like, should we take questions from the crowd? And the crowd, even the crowd was sort of like, you, you know, like, I'm not sure if you can trust us on this kind of decision. Um which is probably a good call in a lot of ways. So, so screening, you know, uh, the, the questions before they went up um, was a very good call on their part. So as a response, or I, I mean, a, as a result of that, I thought all the questions were, you know, a few of them were a bit cheesy. Who's, you know, who's your favorite pony came up in like four different forms and all that. But um, th they were generally good. Uh, I, I believe someone in the forum, um, potentially Holler, had said uh, it was kind of lame when the guy asked um, Nicole Oliver. Oh, I remember the name now. Uh, Nicole Oliver for a hug. I I can understand the logic of that, but you know what? The, the moment actually kind of worked, and um, <laughs> that probably sounds really lame, but it did. Uh, there was only one question that really bugged me, and I kind of don't like the f fact that this got through the screening process. Somebody asked the question basically like, what's your view of the people who make fun of bronies? You know, the people who call us pedophiles or gay or all that. It's like, Jesus Christ, dude. You know, like, this is the definition of bringing it on yourself. And then um, and then it got worse after that because, you know, you, you could telegraph a mile away what the voice actresses were going to say to this. You know, they're not going to say, well, those people are correct. No, I, I mean, like, they're going to say something, you know, reassuring to, you know... I, I mean, it's insanely obvious what their answer is going to be, so why the fuck would you even ask it? And, you know, the, um, I believe Oliver went first and said something like, this is your way of expressing yourself, you don't have to apologize to anybody, and then the crowd, big roaring round of applause. It's like, Jesus, dudes, like, you, you know, this is... This is one step removed from, it's like when Milhouse said on The Simpsons, my mom thinks I'm cool. That was the vibe I got from that question. I thought that was a bit um, embarrassing, for lack of a better word. So no, no offense to the guy who asked it. He was probably, you know, legit in his way. But like, seriously, this is what we're going to do now? Come on, we can do better. Um, 
I, I let me see here. I can't remember the, remember any other questions that were particularly interesting off the top of my head. One, one somewhat amusing thing. Um, this was a personal thing uh, happened while the uh, panel was going on. The whole time I was like sort of you know vulturing to see if anybody was getting out of their chair. Um, and at one point, there the, there were two cosplayers in the very back row that were like right behind where I was sitting. At this time, I was standing next to uh, Mr. Dark Matter, and um, they they got up and they left and like. I give him a look and I like grab out of the chair really quickly. Like, go, 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 go. So uh, he sort of went first into the first seat. And then I want to make sure I articulate this correctly. Um, he had left his bag of stuff behind him. And I was lifting up my foot to move in at the same time he was reaching for his bag. And I kind of, you know, kicked him a little bit. Um, and at that point, I say to him, you, you know, I was sort of indicating like go first. He didn't quite get it. So I'm like, oh, no, go ahead. Then the person who I had been standing uh, behind the whole time, who was sitting down, sort of gave me like a little nod. Like I could just see it out of the corner of my eye because I wasn't paying attention to him, but like it didn't even register that that had happened. And then he proceeds to nudge over, therefore taking the seat that I was about to sit in. And I'm like, what the fuck? And as I'm having this thought, I look over and someone at the edge of the aisle um, was now taking the end seat. And, you know, then my mind stops for a moment. I'm like, what just happened? And then th this sequence of events just dawns on me. And I'm just like, son of a bitch. Um, so yeah, I, I, I didn't challenge him because the panel was still going on. And, you know, I, I suppose maybe I should have been more assertive. There's a pony quote for you. But uh, that was what happened there. Okay, um, what's next after that? So um, there's probably more. St I, I, the, the voice actors panel was uh, very good. Uh, it was probably, I, I mean, it was sort of their main draw, if you will, and uh, it was thoroughly uh, well done, informative. Um, so there's probably more to be said about that, but that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, as a side note, the uh, Bronyville and uh, Everfree radio guys that were hosting the whole thing, I, I thought they did a pretty good job with it. I, I mean, you know, you're worried that you're going to get one of those uh, awkward interviews like they had with the uh, Friendship is Witchcraft people a uh, few, few weeks back where the whole time they're just thinking up things to ask. This actually was one of the more semi-professional things at the uh, event, in my view. So kudos to those guys. I, I think they did a good job with the moderation and all that. Okay. Um, then after that, I, I was able to get the seat. The guy who had nudged over did eventually leave. So I, I know you were worried about me. So I was sitting by the time Daniel and Grimm's Skype went to be set up. Um, and that was kind of amusing as well. The... Now, Skype isn't exactly a flawless program in a lot of ways. Um, I'm not an enthusiast, but I have used it enough to know that sometimes Skype just doesn't fucking work. Um, so when they were trying to set up with Ingram, like, it took a while, and it was a bit painful, and everybody's waiting there. It wasn't quite as crowded as the voice actress thing, but, you know, uh, during the five-minute break, everybody walked out, then walked back in for it, you know. Um, and it was fairly crowded by the time he actually started. Uh, Ingram himself, I think, it, I actually think that Ingram's uh, interaction with the fandom is one of the more interesting things on the fandom side in general, because more than anyone, he actually sin sincerely comes off as a show fan. I think he's managed to, and I don't mean this in a cynical way. I, I mean, um, m maybe there's a little bit there. But, you know, in a way that I give him credit for, he's managed to really get his name out there with a, you know, decent sized group of people. Whereas, you know, he could have remained in the background and like uh, all that. He, he really made the decision like, you know, I'm going to tell them about my Facebook account and ask them to join up. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll put out a little alternate version of a song and all that. Uh, so it's been interesting to watch his interactions on that level, at least in my view. And uh, it continued into this event. Uh, one of the biggest round of applause he got at, at the uh, in the first five minutes was standing up to reveal a brony shirt 